Hello, you fantastic individuals. <laughs> my name is Bruce Gao, and I don't have multiple degrees. My highest level of education is a high school diploma, but I'm working on it. I'm a first year medical student and entrepreneur. I'm gonna talk about chest pain today. So we had a series of lectures in class recently about chest pain, and they teach it to us in a scheme-based format. It looks something like this. So when you learn about chest pain, you think about things in your chest. You think about the sexy organs. You think about the heart. You think about the lungs. And you think about this other category that includes the esophagus or your muscles. Uh, I don't mean to offend any esophagus doctors out there. Um, so that's how you would go through chest pain. So for example, looking out at you guys right now, oh my god, I feel a bit of anxiety and panic in my chest right now. So that would be an idea how you would use this scheme to look at chest pain. So I'm here to talk about a different time I had chest pain. So it was one month ago, and I was at home. I was eating dumplings, and I was watching Netflix. <laughs> it doesn't take very much to make a university student very content, so I was very happy. And all of a sudden, I felt a sharp, knife-like pain right here on the left side of my chest. And so being a medical student, I'm like, okay, I gotta use this chest pain scheme to figure out what's wrong with me. And I thought about it, and then it hit me. A professor told us, if you feel this type of chest pain and you are a tall, skinny, young male, you are a tall, skinny, young male, then you likely have a spontaneous pneumothorax. I'm like, oh great, I love experiential learning, but not this much. <laughs> and I looked online how you treat this, and you just observe. So I just waited and it got worse and worse. My breathing became shallower and shallower. I became lightheaded. I became, my vision became blurry. I felt confused and so I called the ambulance because I'm like, this is, this is getting newsworthy. So <laughs> I called the ambulance and then they came to my doorstep and then they picked me up and they threw me on the stretcher and they measured my blood pressure and it dropped down to 80 over 60. And that on the long term is incompatible with life. That's way too low. And I thought about what could be happening, and it got complicated. Um, I realized that this can get complicated to something called a tension pneumothorax. And I remember my textbook, looking at tension pneumothorax, there was a big black star right beside it. And it said, if, if you didn't get acute medical attention within a few hours, you could, you could die. So I'm a, I'm a healthy 20-year-old male facing this, this feeling, and it didn't feel good at all. So they rush me as fast as they can to the emergency department and they throw me onto the bed and um, they take a chest x-ray and this is what it looks like. So that's my left lung and it's not there at all. And they call down the attending respirologist who was my course coordinator at the time. <laughs> and he comes down, he looks at this chest x-ray and he knew exactly what he had to do and I knew exactly what he had to do and I was not looking forward to it. He took a long metallic needle and he stabbed it right here in my chest to release all the built up pressure that was being released from the hole in my lung and pressing on all the veins leaving my heart. And he, as soon as he stuck it in, it sounded like a balloon deflating. There was a hiss. And I could feel the, my lungs slowly re-expanding my chest and it was a, such a terrible feeling. And on one hand, I could all of a sudden breathe again, which was great. And on the other hand, my course coordinator just shanked me. It was really painful. So anyways, there was a hole in my chest and I stayed in the hospital for three weeks and I got surgery at the end and um, it was crazy to see healthcare from the other side as a patient instead of a healthcare provider. And you know, I, I, I saw what people have told me in general, what makes a good doctor, what makes a bad doctor. I also thought, saw the things I never would have thought about. I thought about, you know, taking the blood pressure every single hour. There's this tight cuff around my right arm and I'm trying to go to bed and it's just <laughs> inflating and it's just uncomfortable. I couldn't get any sleep. And I also realized doctors come in and out so fast. They're so busy and a lot of the times a patient tells them their most innermost feelings and thoughts and some of these things they'd never tell their closest friends or their family members. And so it's such a privilege to be a doctor and a lot of times we're just so busy we miss it. So the last thing I wanna share is the last thing I learned and it's just how grateful I am for the circumstances that let me breathe right now, that let me 
be alive. Because I realize around the world, there are other people living in poverty, living without energy, living with chronic medical conditions that are not adequately taken care of. And what a shame would it be for me to not use my life to let them achieve their life's potential. So I um, felt this thing in my chest. I felt a bit of chest pain. I felt some tightness. I felt some itching. And this is my last differential. It's passion that comes from the heart. <laughs> Sounds a bit cheesy. <laughs> but I had a passion to help other people, these other people who were less fortunate than me. And I had to do something about it. And so after I attended a program called Shad Valley, uh, which is an incredible program, you should check it out if you haven't heard about it, uh, I founded a company that uh, allows people in developing countries to use their mobile phones to line solar panels and improves them by up to 40%, and it meant sh warm showers, lights longer into the night, and a better quality of life. And we're so grateful that it's in over 130 countries around the world, all because I had this chest pain that I couldn't get rid of, <laughs> all because I would work on a piece of code and for four hours and be okay when I ended up with more bugs than I started with. That was passion. So to end off, you know, if you have an itch in your chest, if you have a tightness, if you have something that keeps you up at night, that sticks in the back of your head, then, you know, maybe I'm not a doctor. I can't prescribe things yet. I'm still a student, but I'd argue that the best treatment for that is just to go and, and build your passion, go and follow it. So, by the way, we just did our course, co um, course evaluations for our course coordinators. <laughs> and I said, this guy is a lifesaver, literally. <laughs> Thank you so much.